I I don't talk about this much, but like, and I don't want to brag about it because I don't think I have it anymore, but I was classified as like gifted when I was a kid. I've been sipping, I've been buzzing, shooting doubles like it's nothing wrong and nothing makes you go away. I, I need, need something you prove. Stronger than I'm used to. <laughs> what is going on, gang? Welcome back to Stick Talk, Cardinal Mason part two. Part one is in the ether forever. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded four hours ago. Audio got deleted, so we're back. And this time, we're coming back hotter. We got booze. We got the vibes. We got hoes. We got hoes. Where? Off camera. <laughs> Where? Her name's Mickey. She bad as <laughs> Just trust us. They're all in the back. Andre, yeah. your cousin um, introduced himself as Andre's cousin. So, brother, <laughs> I'm sorry. You never told me your name. I would love to know your name. Mickey. Mickey. I love how he introduced himself as Andre's cousin you're because so he's like incredibly successful in his own right. And he's also your cousin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Mickey Mantle. I'm yeah. just I, I introduced myself as Andre Christian and Dan's friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cardinal. I, as, the, as the client extension future guest on TikTok. Bro, that's what I say. Thank you for uh, being flexible to hop back on with us. We Dude, appreciate it. My pleasure. I got yeah. shit all Absolutely, to do. Bro. I think exactly. this one's going to be, <laughs> this one's gonna be great. I can feel I, it. I like this better already. Dude, the good news is like you're more famous than you were last episode. Yeah. I have an extra hundred thousand ish views yeah. under my belt. Yeah, nice. So there you go. I mean, you never stop. Magic of TikTok. Talking about TikTok <laughs> on Stick Talk. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Dudes are already I heard a little bars. bit of the Canadian accent. In what there? about your dick talk? Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <Too far. laughs> Not the way we're going with this one. Uh, Andre's cousin Mick talk. <laughs> oh. Can we get? Can we get like a real Canadian? Eh. Hey, what about your dick, eh? <laughs> there we go. I fucking love it. <laughs> We're not even half a drink in. I think I think the Canadian accent is the best accent in the world. Really? No. Do you think I yes. have one? A little bit, yeah, for sure. Nobody thinks I do. Everyone thinks I sound like West Coast. West Coast. Mm. West Coast. The, oh, like uh, it comes out when you say certain words. I don't know what words, yeah. but they. Some yeah. people can tell. There's a cut. Like I can tell now. I when I first came here, when I first came to America on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> what was Ellis Island like? What is what? Ellis Island. Ellis That's Island. like where all the immigrants originally He's arrived. He's not American. You want to know? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a good point. So basically, it's when everybody came over to America, they would arrive on Ellis Island, which is in New York City. Yeah. And they the would get like... of Liberty is. Yes. Yes, yeah. and exactly. And she uh, holds your light toward the golden lamp towards the golden door or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah. that a poem? We'll, we'll fill in the blanks. But yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's roughly that's what it is, right? They'd give you like new last names and shit. So oh. when you arrived in America... Mm-hmm. What was your the thought? The greatest country of all time. Yeah, well, I mean, dude, obviously. you know what? I was actually when I came here, when I was driving down in the truck, which is the most American vehicle you can have, yep. drinks gas four miles to the gallon, drinks <laughs> flying. Gas. Um, I remember like I was driving through West Virginia, and I saw like a <laughs> mall, and there was like I swear like a, a an American flag that must have been the size of like one of these buildings. Like it was one of the biggest flags I've ever seen. I don't even that know. That was how Canadian flag. Up. The way you said flag. 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 It's like a Sam Muffin flag. flag. <laughs> Yeast. <laughs> so he Sam remember Muffins? Muffins? Is he no, nah, he's I literally never heard this motherfucker talk. Oh, oh you got oh, it. He's I, was, I never you had a Sam it. Ovens phase. You he's like, it. so I just I just said a baby. <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> so I've been gone for years. <laughs> That's pretty good. You would love him, That's bro. pretty I'm good. Nick Verge is a great Sam yeah. Ovens impersonation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I can't do uh, I can't do Australian. I can't do Scottish. I can do Theo Vaughn and Tate. Those are my only <laughs> two impressions that I can do. Um, I mean, two two very relevant impressions. Yeah, nowadays. right. It's yeah. Bro, so when you moved to Miami, was that like your first Florida experience? Or no, I U.S. experience. I, well, well, I assume you've been to the U.S. prior. Oh, I've been to the U.S. a bunch. Yeah, like yeah, no, I I bounced around a little bit. The first time I like traveled by myself, though, I met you. And you. And not you. <laughs> not Christian. He's still in Sorry. college. I'm, I'm a man. Andre's cousin. He was getting he was getting his copy NBA. Yeah, and then You're I get a text at two AM. Andre's like literally gibberish. Dan calls me Andre's drugged. I'm like, oh fuck you. Yeah, God. dude. And yeah, you, you couldn't bad. you couldn't get into eleven because um, I had shorts on. Because you were in shorts. And I remember I went in there and I was with a couple of boys that were like more experienced like go outers than I was. Like I literally never like gone out really. Like not <laughs> in the States. Like to that extent. Like I'd gone to like hometown bars where it's like whatever like That's you can do whatever you want though. yeah more fun yeah. but like true but like going out is like a whole different skill especially like to these really nice spots in miami yeah. not nice but like high-end spots like 11 and um yeah so i got kidnapped by a stripper <laughs> And uh, I paid her four hundred dollars for something I can't talk about. <laughs> you it's not what you think. Up. It's not. It wasn't like we didn't go all the way, but like yeah, it was four hundred bucks that 
It was a lot of money at the time. It's like me. the old saying, you don't pay him for the sex, you pay him to leave. But this <laughs> exactly. time it was like you were paying to leave. So you know, hold your ass <laughs> yeah, hostage. yeah. Dude, she blindfolded me and cuffed me. You act like it was <laughs> such a court, like coarse thing. You're probably like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, for real. Like they told me not to. They were like, whatever you Who's do, they? don't let her my friends. Okay, okay. They were like, don't let her take you back to wherever she wants to take you. I was like, she's hot. I don't know, maybe. I was also like, I was brand new, so I can't like blame myself, but I mean, yeah, now, now I know better. There's nothing worse than seeing like, not that I go to strip clubs very often because I try not to, but like you always see like these, these little dudes in their little corporate wagey outfit <laughs> getting dragged by the hand by this like six foot two Latina stripper who's wearing heels. The Big irony butt. there. Like taking him to the ATM and he's just sitting there and she's like massaging his shoulders and he's just like punching in the numbers, like taking out eight grand cash. <laughs> Awful. Tootsie's, man. That's like the supermarket of strip clubs. I know. The place is like massive. The meat market. Literal meat. They need God, man. I know. They actually do. Pray for them. The last time I was in Miami, that was like the most evident time when I was like, I need Jesus. Because I was out at Club Space. And we were there until like 5.30 in the morning. Uh We walk out. There's a line to get inside still. Oh, yeah. And me, I, I go back. I sleep for probably like an hour and a half. I'm violently hungover. Oh, and I'm God. like, it's. I think it was Palm Sunday. So I was like, I got to go to church. It, it literally was Palm, was Palm Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So I was it like, was I got to go to church. Sunday. And I was like, where's the nearest church? So I go to one that was like a mile away from the <laughs> hotel. And it's this Spanish-speaking church. Everybody in there is Spanish. And I'm sweating my balls off because there's literally no AC in there. And it's just like, everybody's talking Spanish. It's fucking packed because it's Palm Sunday. You hadn't slept yet? No, no, like slept for like an hour and a half. And like some like very nice abuela, some, mm-hmm. some grandma comes up, she just pats me on the shoulder. She's like, it's going to be okay. I was like, <laughs> she was like, she knew you were fighting some demons, bro. Dude, yeah. serious, I'm, Dude, I'm like just out of it. We were sweating. out with Daniel and uh, he, we were real, we were all just like beyond gone. So we couldn't like keep track of each other. He disappears at the end of the night. We wake up. He's not answering his phone. It's like 1 PM. I'm like, Dude, is this kid alive? He's like, yeah. he texts me at 1 30. He's like, yo. I call him, I'm like, are you good? He's like, yeah, dude, like, I was in space till 8 a.m. I'm like, yeah. He has a habit of doing that. Like, he'll go, he'll go out and then just go dark for, like, two days. I think days. he did. He, he, his hangovers are pretty intense, if yeah. I had to guess. Yeah. He's an intense guy. Yeah. He is. He does everything to the max. <laughs> yeah, fire People really. act like being a wizard is all, like, fucking shits and giggles. <laughs> Lollipops and rainbows. It's, it's, it's a tough job. <laughs> great power comes great responsibility, man. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, for real, yeah. bro. It's just, like, uh, spell your armor. We should probably do this before we get into the drinking, bro. I got you a gift. Actually, two gifts. The other one is going to require some more gifts. Or more drinks. So this is a, a Bible. Okay. So we talked a little bit on the last episode about faith. Mm-hmm. And I think, for me, the biggest change in my life was I like Dan grew up Catholic my entire life was in the church but didn't really feel connected Mm. until I started to read the actual text interesting and so this one I feel like you would actually enjoy it and I was telling Ben this on his episode too because you're a copywriter and I feel like copywriting requires a lot of creativity and this is like the original story like the first story ever told and the best story ever told and so this Bible is unique because it's chronological so it takes the entire Bible and puts it into chronological order. Mm. So it's like a very entertaining read. So you just read this just like a book. Like okay. read it like a, a movie script, essentially. And so I want to give this to you, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, of Appreciate course. that. This yeah. is, yeah. Dude, I, yeah, it was, it was wild because on the, on the pod that we recorded that, that Scott deleted. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this recording got, right now? <laughs> we, we got, yeah, just are, we are, the, are the waves going up and down? <laughs> uh, we're good. We got the thumbs up. We, um, we got to a point where we were talking about faith and like what it kind of means to me at this point. And like it, uh, dude, like I fucking had tears in my eyes. It was super weird. Like where that literally never, ever happens to mm. me. But like, there's been a couple times in the last like month where I've like really, really thought about it. And I'm just like, whoa. Like, it's, yeah. dude, I don't know what it is. Like, it's so weird to me. It's so strange. But I'm going to, I appreciate this. This is I, NIV. I, I've heard of this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I like I'm new to this it. world. I'm new to this world and I'm learning a lot. But just a little bit, day by day, it. a little bit, and just get into it and see what happens. I'm going to read it on the drive back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm driving now. <laughs> You're driving. So I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> trying can't to crash if I'm reading the Bible. Literally, exactly. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. We have another surprise for you, but this one's going to be a lot more fun and playful. Yeah, but we're, we're going we're we're gonna gonna to do that. We're going to hold that one yeah. in the back So if you're watching, you better keep watching. Ah, it's gonna retention. Get really yeah, 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 it's very see, different than the Bible one. You see that implementation there? Yeah. Yep. Marketing 101, yeah, baby. Legit. You guys There's know, no way you're leaving now. You guys know your metrics. Yo, so Yo Crystal, Crystal, go. 
Sorry. It, it might be a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the one that kidnapped me in Tootsie's. How did you know? Yo, so when you <laughs> when you turned 21, you said, this is the last year that I can be average and people will be proud of that. Oh, yeah. And you said, by the time I turn 25, I want to be able to look back and say, you know, I accomplished everything I want. I'm unrecognizable. You're 24 now. Mm-hmm. Where do you feel like you're at on that journey of by the time you're 25, you're, you know, made it unrecognizable? Would have never thought that you'd get to that point. I mean, dude, like the, the, the problem with that is that's such a subjective metric and you you change your standards. You move the goalposts every yep. year. You guys probably like everybody out there who's just getting started with business like they they have really low standards, which is a good thing. Right. Because you want to be able to hit goals that you can actually achieve. Yeah. If you start trying to hit goals where it's like I'm, I'm 18, I've never had a business in my life and I want to do 100K a month in the first year, probably not going to happen. But you can reasonably get to 10K a month in the first year, but that's still not a great goal. Like, dude, I'm sure that I'm going to look back, you know, at where I am now and I, I'm happy with where I'm at now. Where, I'm where super are you grateful. at now? Just for the audience. Are you talking about in terms of numbers or? Just in general, yeah, numbers. Just like, what are you, what are you doing now? I mean, yeah, so I, I have... A, you know, a team of nine people that I'm leading from the front. Um, you know, we're doing copy MBA doing a couple of different things. Like I'm, you know, we're between three and 400 K in revenue every month since, you know, May, um, you know, hopefully this month we'll, we'll smash that. Um, I got, you know, family on my payroll. I got, um, you know, people that depend on me. I got, you know, I'm, I'm looking, ahead in the next couple of years and I kind of want to have a family like that's important to me like I, not anytime soon soon but like I'm, I'm imagining that like I'll probably hit a point 27 28 I actually had a conversation with a girl um a couple nights ago and I was I was basically saying like if you I, I barely know this girl like we've we've hung out a couple times but like we just we were chatting I was like if you got pregnant like I would figure it out like I would probably like I'd probably be like a dad I would probably just do that. I feel like she probably let you practice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I I basically feel like I feel ready to take on as much responsibility as as I'm given. Why do you think that is? Like, what led you to getting to that point? I I don't know. I don't know why that is. I just feel like everything that I've handled so far is you know I've has been you know pretty challenging. Um. Like a lot of L's in business that you have to come back from, a lot of L's in relationships or just per- personal life, and like you always just come back like calloused and tougher. Yeah. And um, I feel like you know, with for me to for me to raise a kid, like dude, people have been raising kids at twenty four for all of Humanity. time. Yeah. Except the only thing that really holds people back is the financial thing mm-hmm. that's taken care of. I know for a fact that I would I would move this girl in. We'd probably get a house, but get some space. I, uh, you know, the kid would have the best of everything they need. Like, she's he'd be watching. Good. She's, she's he'd like, be good. at what age do you give him that watch? This one? <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> I'll give him the date just when he turns maybe 18. <laughs> we were talking about last time about how you, <laughs> you just like, I, you, yeah, you left it in a glove box. Uh, got it stolen, yeah. Yeah, so it got stolen. I was hoping we don't talk about that again. <laughs> <laughs> so you said your family's on your payroll. What does that look like? Your brother? Your, my your brother, parents? I mean, my brother, like, he's. You know, he's doing his own thing. He's freelancing, but he does work with me. And, um, you know, he, he's a coach in Copy MBA. He does some other stuff for me. He does some ghostwriting. I'm, I can't, can't be bothered to write some of my own tweets sometimes. And so yeah. I'll be like, yo, Griff, feed me a tweet. He's just, he's just like a brain clone of me. Like, he's a super, super bright kid. Super, super smart. Super uh, witty and funny and aware. He, he just knows what's going on. So I really like working with him because he literally is just like a clone of me. Um, and so, and he's also, he's growing into a really good marketer. Um, so I'm proud of him for that too, because like, I don't know, you get, it's, there's one thing about like just being a copywriter and being able to write stuff and like, sort of like be, becoming like a little beginner business guy. But like, you get to a point where it's like, you, you learn the science behind, you know, how to be like a real marketer, like how to solve mm-hmm. problems and stuff like that. Like super technical and he's getting to the, that point. And so I got him on and my mom is doing her thing. Like basically like she was at. She was a high school teacher. She taught at the high school that I went to. That's cool. And she was awesome until, uh, like, it was a great job until, like, COVID, and it just started to suck. And so she was like, I need to find a way out. And I told her basically how to start, like, this, like, fitness business. And she's, you know, she's 52 almost. Wait, sorry. She's turning 52 this month. 
and um, she's in super, like, super shape. Like, she looks really good. She's, like, super healthy and all that stuff. And I was just thinking, like, we could easily, like, turn you into an influencer. <laughs> and, like, it's just slower than I thought. And so, like, and she's figuring it out. Like, she's got her thing. But, like, in the meantime, like, my goal was to basically just replace her salary that she was making as a teacher so that she could quit um, until she starts making, like, 20, 30 grand a month from her <laughs> fitness biz. <laughs> Um, and like, dude, I, I don't think it's that far off. Dude, what's that dynamic like? Because I feel like we all grew up with kids who went to a high school where their parent was a teacher. I always wondered, like, was was that weird? Was that fun? What would you it's think? It's kind of weird. Kids yeah. are like, like, hey, I have your mom as a teacher. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had different last names, like, because she kept her maiden name um, mm. as a teacher. So, like, nobody, there were a lot of people that didn't know. I mean, <laughs> until they saw us pull up to school together and they're like, <laughs> How do you guys? Yeah. Was like, what? What? <laughs> like, why are you? Like, why bro, is she driving you to school? I was like, maybe right, they so were like, oh yeah. shit, maybe. this isn't Mrs. Cardinal. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, that it, I mean, it was all right. I just couldn't like, I couldn't fuck around. Yeah. Like, I never skipped class. I didn't skip a single class. I, well, kind of. I don't know. Low key, but like, yeah. I she kept me. She kept me like doing good. Like I, I, I was great in high school. Like I was actually a solid student. I think I graduated with honors every year, or uh, I, I had honor. I was honor roll every year. Of high school, and then I went to college, and just everything shit's bad. So does <laughs> dude stop trying? I feel like, at least for me, my parents are like, we have no clue what you really do, but keep it up. Is that the same for you? Like deep yeah. down, they don't know exactly what's going on, but they know it's working. My mom knows. My dad has no clue. My grandpa, who I <laughs> I actually see pretty often, um, like because he's just the boy. He's um, uh, he's eighty two. And he's like just the homie, and he has no clue. Like he doesn't even have a frame <laughs> of reference. He's like, copy what? So, but <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool, but like also like, I don't really feel the need to tell people because like I don't really think they care that much. Like yeah. I just, I I used to like try and figure out like how can I say what I do, <laughs> um, and like I'll usually just say I have a business. Yeah. And like if people care to know, then oh, they'll, they'll like ask keep asking it. questions. They'll be like, oh, what kind of business? I'm in. Da, da, da. I'll be like, oh, well, I train copywriters. And they're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. So that's what I say now. I say I train copywriters. Um, but like most of the time they're like, oh, what do you guys do for a living? Or, like that happens a lot, especially when I wear this. They'll be like, oh, I see that watch, man. Like, what do you do for a living? It's like, oh, I own a business. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. That's it. They don't yeah. care. Yeah. They yeah. don't care. <laughs> I mean, like if a girl, if you're approaching a girl in a bar, you're like, oh, I train whales or some dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, San, Sanjay <laughs> says mean, he like works a... in an aquarium. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, he does. Yeah, he actually does that. At the gift shop, yeah. I'll I'll say like sometimes I'm like a I'm a lone ranger. Or like, I don't know. <laughs> Take care of my people. Yeah, I, I make money with my people. Um, or girls that, yeah, I, I don't know. I probably shouldn't even say this because they'll probably see this. But I, I mean, yeah, like a, a lot of the public facing stuff I'll usually say, but then like, I don't know. I, I don't like to share my business. If like, a girl's nice made it this far like, in the episode, then she deserves to hear it. Yeah, for real. But I like to maintain like an air of mystery. So like I usually won't reveal yeah. like what I do for a while. Yeah. Going back to what you said earlier, there's just something about having a super deep conversation with a girl you just met that's like the best thing ever. For legit. I don't yeah. know why it's so fun. It's just like, yeah, this is great. Until <laughs> she's like, what are we? And you're like, oh, <gasps> <SpongeBob thing. laughs> We're just two beings on a floating rock. I can't rock. believe you said <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's, how it's do, fun, though. How do copywriting skills translate into talking to girls? Everything is copy. Yeah. The question I mean, was for him. For bro. him. Everything is copy. <laughs> for I him. think he'll agree, though. I, everything is copy. I think, like, the way I like to explain it is copywriting is trying to find a way to make people care about something that you care about. Um, where it's like... Care about you because you care about yourself. Exactly. Are you well, self-centered? Well, no. Like, because if you can find a way to... So, like... Okay, so I care about helping people um, make money with copywriting. That's cool, right? How do I get other people to give a shit that I give a shit that I'm trying to make the money with copywriting? That's what copywriting is. So, like, I, if, if I care about something or, and I, I want to, like, loop someone in, like, I want to, like, hook them and make that. Like, I just have to, like, it's just finding creative ways to sort of take my interests and take their interests and make them aligned. Mm. So, like, that's kind of the copywriting mechanism for, like, dating, Cause like I don't know, there's a, I mean, there's there's like a video on Twitter that you guys probably saw where it's Josh Messner. You guys know Josh Messner? Oh yeah. They like they clipped him. It wasn't real, but it was basically him like at dinner with these these two chicks talking about clothes. Talking about clothesify. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we take sales reps and we train them. It's called 
Closeify. That's like <laughs> that's a good. That's like actually like probably the best Josh impression I've heard besides Griff. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. So like I don't know. There's a lot of guys that just like as long as you like, bro. Girls just want to like have fun and, and talk about yeah. themselves. Like that's that's literally it's it. like that's Ty. The, he, that's uh, the goal. Ty Lopez was saying how there was a bouncer at the nightclub he owned, and he like got the most girls he's ever met, and the guy made like dirt money. Yeah. What was his name again? Mr. X. Mr. X. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing about that a while ago. I think I listened to him on. Ice Coffee Hour. Yeah, yeah. You guys listen to that? That's the episode I watched I the day of. Mm. That was my research. I just watched that. <laughs> we do our research. Yeah. Were you guys a little Star Trek, Star Trek for that? At first. For this one? Yeah. For this? Yeah. For this? yeah, yeah. For at, this. First, <laughs> at first I was, but we, we broke them in. Yeah. I, I wasn't personally just because we had yeah, he was talked shit he at was the Heat game for like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So like I, I was starstruck when I met him there a tiny bit. It's like, oh shit, like this is the guy who kind of- seeing that on, on the on on online business. Yeah. But- yeah. Uh, during the podcast, I wasn't. I feel like the podcast flowed well because we weren't. Well, you guys have met a lot of famous people, like people that are considered like Ben Beater, well, Colonel Mason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, like you know, I added you to my list. Your boys with Gary Vee. <laughs> nah. your boy. Like you've met him like what five or six times now? Yeah, he's boys with me. He posted me on it. He's boys with you. <laughs> yeah. He said Christian was handsome. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh yeah. You yeah. didn't see the clip? No, I didn't. There was like a meet and greet at his event, and I asked him a question, and it got clipped on his Instagram. <laughs> you asked him a question, he was just like, "You're just so handsome." I don't even know mm -hmm. what you just I'll said. I'll pull it up, <laughs> Christian. You're you're a handsome guy. I'm not gonna lie. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, we gotta hype him up because sometimes shit I'm pretty on him insecure during the band myself. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh yeah, because you're a Steelers fan. No, 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 no. We oh, uh, they just shit on me for everything. Did bro. you watch the Nelk, Nelk episode with uh, Andrew Schultz? Yeah, yeah. So we we were just basically sticking him as as Steiny. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey. There you go. Yeah, he said that twice. Yeah, you yeah. He meant it twice. He really I risked up Gary Vee, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> is that do you think he's real? Like what? is he like a real guy? Yeah. What like do you mean when real? he says that shit, is he like being legit? Yeah. He's the most real out of all the guys that I've met. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Patrick Bad David seems like a real motherfucker. Yeah. You met Patrick Bad David? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Bro, <laughs> crazy story. But the guy that pr that posts our podcast yeah. works with. Patrick Shout out Bad to David. Kai, by the way. Yeah. Kai yeah. Her podcast. She, He's a big he, part of uh, it. Actually, got a job with PBD through wow. cold email. But oh, um, there you go. Clientascension.com forward slash yes. And the most recent one, um, we had like the VIP ticket or whatever, and we bought. PBD a gift and nice. then um, oh yeah what did he ever say to that like a cigar tray oh he, he loved dude it, he fucking loved it really he loved him, it. yeah you get him a Rolex <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> he, he opened like a little cigar bar where he hosts like big guests that come over afterwards and they just hang out because he likes cigars so we got him like a really nice like yeah three hundred dollar ashtray and wow. he, he keeps it in there three hundred dollar ashtray really yeah, yeah. PBD so was an interesting one when we have one. a mom we'll be like oh yeah yeah he was an interesting one because I ended up smoking cigars with him and Rudy Giuliani. Funny enough, for like Bro, three what hours. What the fuck? So it was, it was just, it was like a couch setting like this. Yeah. PBD was there, Giuliani was here, I was here, and we were just smoking cigars for three hours. How Giuliani was crazy. Was telling the craziest stories. <laughs> Pat's over there just being like a mafia boss that he is, and it was just the coolest thing ever. Savage. That's he so he cool. was so cool, but he's got this like we talked about it before. He's got this like presidential energy. Yeah, like when he's yeah. in the room, he's just a huge motherfucker. Is he gonna run? He no, can't. he can't. He's, he's not. He's not. Born he's, not uh, he's not natural born citizen. Otherwise, he'd absolutely run. Yeah, that's he'd cool absolutely. Shit. Dude, run. it's so funny the way that you can provide value to people in like the most random ways, just be by becoming like a well-rounded individual. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got like 15 minutes of FaceTime just talking to him, simply because I mentioned the cigar bar that we were members at, and then it was like the number one cigar bar in the world that was voted mm -hmm. and since he just opened a cigar bar he was like asked me questions like how much they charge for memberships how often they do these things he's trying to make like an invite only thing so he was mm -hmm. like trying to get all this information but in tampa sick. no this was over in fort this lauderdale was in his offices in fort lauderdale okay because yeah. we were over in fort lauderdale for a while because our uncle had rented a house yeah. over there so we were just going back to visit and he had this like live podcast where you could spend like it was like 300 bucks to like yeah hang out with him for like five hours with like 15 people oh, and just really? smoke cigars so we're like yeah 300 no bucks Oh, yeah, oh for the tray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was so, su super cheap. Super well, cheap. no, like for the ticket, too. Oh, oh, you they were selling tickets. And then because okay. we had to connect Kai, who's like his right hand man essentially for marketing, he was mm -hmm. like, yo, like, because there's like 50 people in the cigar lounge and there's a bar and everything. He's like, PB's going to sit there. Giuliani's going to sit there. So sit right here. 
And so I sat there and we just were there for like three hours. Just Giuliani, PBD. Just talking shit. Some, guy were, some guys were coming up to PBD, but yeah, we were just talking. That's for cool. For three man. hours. That's sick. Smoking cigars. Giuliani was telling the craziest stories because he's been around guys like Reagan, obviously Trump. I mean, bro, yeah. Mayor of New York Dude. during 9 11. Great, yeah. great cameo on Borat, too. <laughs> was, he, was he in Borat? I didn't ask the him about one, that. The second Didn't one. he hate that? Yeah, he got me. He, oh, you yeah. probably hate that. Yeah. I could imagine. He got me. Don't you find a, Don't you sign a thing though that says like you're you're going on, or do they just put it up? So he he probably signed like a document to do like an interview, because the way they had set it, they had set it up. They had like a super hot girl doing the interview, mm-hmm. and like they had <laughs> cameras on him the whole time. So it, it was obviously like a gotcha situation. Mm. Have, have you seen Borat? I've uh, yeah. I don't really Very remember nice. Jimmy, but yeah. Very nice. nice. This is my sister. Great success. <laughs> <laughs> They're one of my favorite movies of all time. I remember when I was a little kid, I had stolen the Borat DVD from my uncle's house to watch it. When you I act was like, like Ray wouldn't have just given it to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, he, well, no you he probably wouldn't because I, like, I was like 11, 12 years old. I don't think he cares, bro. No, he, he, he probably, but he probably would have been like, dude, you can't be watching this. Yeah, because your mom. <laughs> dude, I, so I was watching it and my, my dad came in when I was watching it and it was like one of the parts where I think like somebody's dick is out. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? He snapped the fucking DVD. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, dad, I got to tell you, man, that I took that from Ray's house. We got to go to Target and buy him another one. He was so pissed. <laughs> Oh, one of my favorite movies ever, though. When DVDs were a thing. Yeah. I miss that, that, bro. Dude, isn't that wild? Imagine, like, remember, growing up, would you ever just, like, go with your parents to Blockbuster and pick a movie out? Dude, yeah. So, <sighs> like, my dad, bro. back in, like, 2001, my mom was out somewhere. My dad was like, if you help me clean the house, I'll buy you Monsters, Inc. You, you say Monsters back in 2001? Yeah. 2000, how old are you guys? 23? Yeah. So, so you were, like, we, three. Dude, we were born two. in 99. You want nine on? Your dad's like, come on. How do you have memories from two? How do you have memories from two? Dude, your dad asked you to clean the house at wait, two? Actually, this is funny. This is this is funny as fuck. You're crawling let's, over let's, to let's wipe take, the let's, floor. Let's take a little walk to this uh, this side. Okay, so I I don't talk about this much, but like, and I don't want to brag about it because I don't think I have it anymore, but I was classified as like gifted when I was a kid. And so basically I just learned how to read early in my life. And so like they thought I was gifted. So they kind of <laughs> let me do whatever I want. <laughs> and one of the, the tests. chosen one. One of the, one like of the, Anakin I almost Skywalker. didn't get it. I almost didn't get it because I fucked up a question so ridiculously bad that they actually thought it was the other way around. They thought I was autistic. Uh, and so like, they asked me, they were asking me questions, like just more like logic questions. Like, why do you look both ways before you cross the street? So you don't get hit by a car. Easy. Right. I was answering those as a kid. No problem. Right. And then they asked me, why do you turn off the lights when you leave a room? And my answer was so that the people on the bikes don't get tired. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, what? right? And that's so that's what they said. And so like the lady was like, hmm, Something and just on a clipboard wrong. was just like, <laughs> this, this kid's, kid's crazy. <laughs> Learning disabled. Yeah. <laughs> and then so Damn. so they called my mom. They were like, your kid's smart, I guess, but like he said some shit and we were like, no one knew what the How fuck. How old he, are you at this point? So they basically said like, yeah, we asked him why he, I was like probably 4 or 5, and they asked me or they said, we asked him why you should turn off the lights when you leave a room. And he said, so that the people on the bikes don't get tired. My mom was like, oh, that's because we went to the science center when I was like three or four. <laughs> and I like was pedaling on a bike, powering a light bulb. And I thought that <laughs> power <laughs> was just like rows and rows of people <laughs> pedaling on bikes, trying to keep the city's lights on. <laughs> and so like I was just trying to be considerate to the people in the building, like yeah, trying not course. to like, yeah, of like course. she was like, Mason left the lights on again. I guess I'm working overtime. <laughs> <laughs> just like going nuts on a bike. And yeah. so anyway, um, where do we, where do we, wh- I think how if do you we take it far oh, enough. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so one of the results from the quiz was I have like a 98th auditory memory, like 90, 98th percentile auditory memory, which is wild. I don't think I have it anymore. Cause I think I just like, it's cause of the Sauvignon Blanc that, that you got me. Thanks Scott. <laughs> I feel way dumber since I started drinking. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. dumb now. So <laughs> SATs, I would bomb. But yeah. So anyway, so, um, story was my dad said if I helped him clean the house in 2001 that he would buy me Monsters, Inc. And we went to the store and we bought it. And I watched that movie literally every day for like two years straight. <laughs> I could recite right. it word for word right now. Like I've watched it so many times. It's not even funny. How are you two years old and your dad's like, clean the house with me? <laughs> That's such a good point. He's trying to give you some shit to do. He's like my, carrying him around like, yo. <laughs> like I think it was Mason, like, scrub the floor. You're like, wow. He's like, pick up stuff. No, I enjoyed it. My dad's a cool guy. No, oh, it's funny, man. Yeah. I mean, that's a cool guy. Man. Interesting. Interesting. What was guy. it like growing up in Canada? Same as it was for you guys, man. <laughs> Same. I mean, we're in upstate New York, so we're really 
pretty close. Legit. We're on the same latitude line. There we go. No, like latitude. Longitude. Longitude. Yeah. I said it right this <laughs> the time. The diagonal one that no one knows about. <laughs> yeah, it goes like this, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah. No, Canada was cool, man. We just like we had different like little restaurants and shit like that. Like we, I don't know. It was like part of the chores to like shovel the driveway when it snows outside. It's pretty much it. Like we're like yeah. we're close. Okay. Fun fact. There's like. So if you look at a map of like Canada and America, right? It's like Canada and then the U.S., but there's a part of Canada that kind of dips into the states mm-hmm. where it touches Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New York, and, and uh, Michigan, and Wisconsin, I'm pretty sure, some sh- whatever. So it dips in, right? I actually know all 50 states. I like, there's a game. Ben put me on this. There's a game that you can play. I need a computer, but I can name all 50 states in like legit under a minute. I can click on it. It'll be, it'll be like New Jersey over here. So you still have that. Wow, dude. Yeah. Well, no, That's I just like memorized that, <laughs> but we'll pull it up later. It's actually, f- anyway, so Bro. Canada, part of Canada dips into the States and there's a line where it's like, you go from basically like North Dakota and then it goes across yeah, to like yeah. Maine. But under it that, under that, that's where I think it's like 50% of the entire country lives in just that part. And then there's all of Canada above that. And so that part is basically America. And then above that is like real Canada. Yeah. So like above that line is like where people actually do are like they are different. They sound different. They like live completely different lives. But like for Canadians, like under that line, which is where I'm from, That's where I'm from. like literally an hour from Buffalo. You want to hear something fucked up? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth grade. That was great. When we first got to school, the teacher's like, all right, it's September. In June, we're going to have a test. You're going to have to name all 50 states and capitals. Uh-huh. That's how you get to middle school. So we're like, fuck, dude. We got to crush this or we're, we're screwed. <laughs> so every day, like, imagine you just keep, imagine just every June you just fuck up one and you're just like 20 years old in grade five. <laughs> I can't get North Dakota, <laughs> dude. Fuck. <laughs> no, but so we, every, you know, like indoor, like, I don't know if it was like this in Canada, but recess, you would see if it was indoor or outdoor from like uh-huh. the, it was a green or red sign on the wall. Yeah, yeah. So whenever it was indoor recess, we would sit there and play states and capitals. Nice. We get to June, we're ready to crush this shit. Uh-huh. Teacher goes, yeah, we're not doing the test. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking bamboozled you like that? Yeah, Mr. Ailey was a guy, but um, I won't assume his gender. Sorry. But <laughs> spent the whole year learning the states job. and capitals, and he was like, nope, we're not doing this. Teaching oh, is a woman's job. <laughs> <laughs> I trust my child with a male teacher. <laughs> Here goes the table. If you're a man, why would you be teaching children? <laughs> Go out and teach grown men how to do things like <laughs> fighting and driving and making money with your people. <laughs> Uh, that's enough of that. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Scott, bring us bottle. another bottle. <laughs> Give me another bottle. Andre's cousin. What's your name? Give me another bottle of wine. Now. <laughs> that's funny. Unprompted. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't have to ask you. <laughs> you should do it unprompted. Where, is, where did he go? Mickey disappeared. Does he live here? No, no, no. no. He's just I'm fucking. I'm fucking. He's, he's from Alabama. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I just flew in. I'm meeting with an investor in st pete tomorrow like Investor. bro you're 19 years old this is so he cool. came to meet you bro oh wait am i investing in something no what is it like being famous it's cool bro <laughs> let's let's talk it's about that cool. what, are the, what are the benefits of being uh micro <laughs> tiktok celebrity bro. i think he's more in the macro level uh, now. Uh, you're, I mean, skating bro, you're skating it you're skating it you're skating that line what what is considered macro on tiktok one million macro on twitter is like above what 10k no, I'd say like dude. Macro on Twitter is above like fifty. You, I would say fifty. Yeah, fifty k, hundred k. I say TikTok's a milli. A milli? Yeah. So I got a long way to go. I mean, I you're, think like, you're halfway there. About. Uh, I think I could hit five hundred k by boot. the end of the year. I'm gonna need to three hundred x for my spot. I'm just a boot. Just a boot. There we go. No, no, I said that. Oh. I'm trying to get the because I sometimes idea. I do that. I say a boat. It's it, not a. Ba- it's not a boot. It's a boat. <laughs> like it's about is how you guys say it, but like about is how I say. So it. it's like having this much clout. <laughs> <laughs> You got that shit ready in the back pocket? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I've been preparing um, all day. Um, sorry, I don't want to give you guys a heart attack. I'll make sure my pop filter's still on. <laughs> What's this called again? It's not a pop filter. Pop filter is the thing. It's the the mic- anyway. Microphone condom. Condom? Mi- yeah, Mike this is a, the Magnum. This is a Magnum. Oh, because it's black. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can keep leaving it. Leave, leave it. it. Leave it. We're, nothing um, gets caught in this podcast. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, just put the it. lines across our eyes like you had in your profile <laughs> picture way back. <laughs> yeah, Mason didn't say that. I don't know who that was. <laughs> but in terms of like, I dude, I mean, not so much anymore because like I think people are kind of over it. They're like, stop giving a shit about me. But like, back in like October, November, when I was like really pumping, that was such a that was such a golden age of TikTok for me. Like legit, everything I did would get like at least a quarter million views. Like no matter what, I could literally post a picture of my feet, 
and it would get half a million views. The CCP was like, we got it. This kid's it. Yeah, they were like, we like that f- those feet, man. <laughs> kid's got some nice we feet. We like the Cardinal. Heat we approve. <laughs> you get 10 million views turned into D'Amelio overnight. Cardinal <laughs> D'Amelio. And so, yeah, for a while, I was getting recognized. Like, literally, there was like, there was like two weeks straight in Miami where every single day in Miami I would get recognized by someone. Wow. It was usually men, which whatever, fine. Were you ever on a date and you got like recognized yes. and the girl's like, who is this Actually, kid? there was one time um, this girl that I was like with in like January, I flew her down to Miami and we hung out for like two weeks straight. She was only supposed to stay for like four or five days and I just ended up liking her. So I kept her there. Um, <laughs> trafficked I her. her. I there. mean, I trafficked her. It was fine. <laughs> she, she was trafficked. And then, so I, we were walking across, we were in Brickell, walked across the street. And there was a guy at a restaurant. He was like, he was like, yo, Mason. I was like, what's up, man? <laughs> and then uh, I was like, babe, did you hear that? <laughs> you recognize me? Did you hear that? And she was like, what? I'm like, never mind. <laughs> never mind. So Nobody she didn't even that. hear it. So I got recognized in front of her. And I was like, hey, man, you're like, that, do that again. For her. Yeah. Like, do that again. <laughs> Can you pretend to recognize me again? <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, dude, like, it's cool. Like, there's been, especially in a home, too. That's when I like will actually talk to people. So like there were a couple of times where I was at a, a club. I was with Abby, my like ops girl. Um, and we were like, it was like a Your BB? Was, in my BB. And um What's we were, B, what's BB? Nah. It's just BB. BB. Oh my bad. That's Ben Bader. Curious. Oh, Ben Bader, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were out, we were talking biz or whatever, and um and then some kid like interrupted her while she was talking. He was like, excuse me. Are you Mason from TikTok? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, what's up, dog? And we talked for like a while. And I like, I think I sent him copy NBA for free. I never heard back about a testimonial. I don't think he did anything. But well, that makes sense. Yeah. Usually when you don't pay for shit, you don't do anything with yeah. it. Yeah. And that pay, kid grew up to be the next attention. Elon Musk. That's, that's the quote. That's the quote. <laughs> he grew up to be Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Michael? I literally have that in my in my my Webby slides is when you don't I could literally recite that shit literally word for word right now. Your Wait, webinar um, slides? My we- yeah, I've done what so What do you many. have in your webinar slides, though? I have a thing where it's basically like, I shouldn't even say this because it's like a t- total blatant sales tactic, but like most people don't give a shit. It's basically like people don't respect the free class because it's free. And yep. I tell people like, yo, you, you get free shit all the time online, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, and you don't listen to any of it. So, let, so make me a deal. And there's a screenshot of a $2,000 like invoice that was paid from when I taught someone basically what was in the free class. And I was like, this is the first time I ever taught this stuff. It was about a year ago. This guy's now making 30 grand a month, so it doesn't matter. He doesn't care. But agree to treat this information as if you just paid $2,000 out of your own personal bank account. Because if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. If you agree, say yes, yes in the chat. All right. Then we move on. It's like the Hormozy. You get one yes, so then they're... And you're doing a little, pr- and yes. you're doing a little <laughs> price anchoring by saying 2K? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Will Rivera does 10K. That's crazy. That's why he no, makes more dude, money. It, it, I, we even say that for like higher ticket deals. Mm-hmm. Like whenever people are like, "Oh, I would, I could just do this by myself." Like, why haven't you? There's so much information on the internet. If you were going to do it yourself, you would have already done it. Mm-hmm. Literally, the act of putting money down, it Betting sounds cliche, is what actually caused people to do it. Look at fitness offers, for example. Everybody knows you need to fucking move around a little bit more and be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but people don't do it unless they pay a trainer to actually. Tell them to do it on a weekly basis. That's why I said yeah. my recent TikTok and it got like two hundred. Thanks, Christian. Dude, that's so considerate. I love you, man. Thank you. We're and uh, you we're, gave me the rest of it. You we're taking a little remission. Bro. I'm I'm throwing in a a lip pillow. Shout out Con- Connor Sunderland. Upper decky. Little zinni. upper decky. Little no no no. I, I, I'm a bottom decky. Huh? The upper decky zinni kid. The Did little zinnichino. Someone coined that. I thought that was just a thing. Some kid in Zimbabwe. He put in a verb. Zinni Crosby. Since we've got a Canadian here. Zinni Crosby. You like that? You guys are hilarious. We try, man. This is so funny, man. Scott, can you clip that? Yeah, I just want to. Client Essential Boys are funny. <laughs> no, like the fact that we're they're funny. funny people. Yeah. Yes. I just want people to know I'm funny, <laughs> bro. I just want to be TikTok famous, bro. <laughs> All right. So, what else? Mm. What, what, what else? We, what we, else? Man? We haven't gotten into business at all. Yeah. So far. What, what is you guys, business? What do you, you guys want to talk about? What is business? Yeah. Lifestyle stuff? Yeah. No, we can talk about my stupid ass monthly burn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought it was bad until I, you guys know Tom Cruise. Yeah. You think that I'm Tom Cruise? Not like, not like Tom Cruise, like, like Mission Impossible. Oh, I, mean. okay, oh, okay, okay. I, I was thought you say, meant like section, <laughs> section eight guy. We have to bleep this out, but actually, you know what? How can I, cause I don't know if he told me this in confidence, but like, I don't know. It's like in the, in the mid six figures, this is like monthly personal burn is what he <laughs> spends on himself. 
But dude, I will say Tom Cruise is one of the nicest dudes I've I've met who's that rich. And like people think just because he's on TikTok talking shit, like he's not actually rich. That dude is minted, bro. Like he's minted. Wow. He is caked. Caked. Like he's so rich. Bro. Pause. Yeah, for real. He's caked up. Double. Yeah. <laughs> he's caked what you up. Doing with all that ass money. on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is yeah, your monthly man. burn? What does that look like? Um, Break it down from a financial standpoint. Yeah, man. So when I was a kid, um, I, had, <laughs> I had a man, I had a friend down the block. His name was Andre. And he would, uh, <laughs> I also had this friend. His name was the cold email wizard. And uh, so he would just uh, kind of come up in your house and tell you how to, how to apply force. <laughs> and um, didn't really know what that meant at the time. But uh, Still don't. Still don't really know. You know, he, that guy was a mystery, man. Mm. But... Uh, but um yeah, so I think he's pretty successful in life now. I think he uh, he runs a he runs a business or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Client A. That San- was Theo Client Von, A. Sanchez. That was the Theo Vaughn. Who's who is that? I don't even know who that is. That that you me, might be staying in his very hotel room. That's just you getting more Americanized. That's how you're gonna talk in like two years from now if you stay down here. <laughs> this is a cool but, yeah. episode because we've had Cardinal Mason, Andrew Tate, and Theo Vaughn on, yeah. on one and episode. triple feature. We'll put them all in the thumbnail. Yeah. The, on Mount, it will put it on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. it'll be you. Yeah. Who I need one more then. Uh, it could be me. Let's throw like the actual Tom. <laughs> let, let's throw the here. actual Tom Cruise on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the, yeah like, the, like, the, like, the, like the Mission Impossible. Dude. What's the What's the church you're all a part of? The Scientology. Uh, Scientology. It's based in St. Petersburg. Yeah, I know it's Clearwater, but yeah. Church of Church of Clientology. Clientology. <laughs> that's that's what we respectfully decline my invite, too. but it's fine. That's actually a thing, by the way. Um, that was like one of the first coaching programs that I ever thought about joining, the Church of Clientology. It was. Uh, Wait, you guys that's were, a thing. It's an actual thing. It was like a Facebook group, but it was like 4K. I think it was like uh, this guy Ryan. I can't remember his last name, but and then the other guy was Ben. Old school guys like Money Twitter, like 2019. Wow. And they, they just had, they posted ridiculous results. They had this like chick who had like a, a soap making coaching offer that she was, she was making like 60 grand a month. And at the time I've never even heard of anyone making 60 grand a month. And I was yeah. like, if she's making soap doing that, then I could probably do There's some to this online business stuff. We talked about this um, earlier today before Scott corrupted the files uh, <laughs> about like things seemingly just falling into place mm-hmm. and going your way. Talk about like when you really started like feeling the momentum and like, oh, like the shit for whatever reason, whether it's like another cause outside of here, like started to seem like, okay, this is like really clicking and like I've got like a really special opportunity. Like when was that point for you? Um, I, You're saying at what point did I realize that this was the opportunity? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So copy MBA for the people. Like I said, yeah, copy MBA. So. Um, for anybody who's know, we like we had Copy MBA, but we relaunched or like we did like a grand reopening, mm-hmm. April nineteenth, which was when I was like, that's the day I decided, okay, I'm doing this for real. Um, we launched the coaching program. Um, I was like making modules as I was selling it. Um, I started doing webbies, free classes, and um, <clears throat> everything was just doing well. And like, dude, I I just realized that like. If there was anything that I was going to use my personal brand for, there was like no other thing that I would rather teach or sell. And like, I, it's a good fucking product. Like the product is actually genuinely good. There are people, like anyone who actually tries will get results. Um, and it's just, dude, it's fun. Like, I don't know. I, I think every day I slowly realize that I just need to become more and more invested in it. The, the, when it actually hit me was when I, like, when I realized I need to actually take it seriously is like, I, I think we, briefly talked about this, but I wrote an email about this. I was in uh, Marbella and I was about to do another week of, of Europe, Euro summer in Mykonos. And I realized that I hadn't actually worked in like a week. And I thought that I would enjoy a vacation because I, you know, because you know, who doesn't want to go on Euro summer and you're like, you're on boats and you're hanging out with girls and you're going out and all the time and you're having nice dinners. First of all, food in Spain, four out of 10. Really? Every place, really, bro. There was one restaurant that was actually like a seven or eight out of ten. Everything else, four out of ten. Mm. I don't know why. Anyway, it didn't feel like a vacation. I don't need a vacation. What I actually want to do is work. And I used to listen to Hermosi say this, where he was like, "I don't like to have fun. I just want to work." With a breathe right strip over his nose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, you don't want to have fun, man? Like, have some fun." 
<clears throat> and then I realized like when you actually have a business that you love, there's nothing more fun than like than just working. being in the lab. Like, dude, I got it's me and Ben, like just going head to head, like just brainstorming all the time. We got my sales guys, we got my product team. Everything's like not everything's not dialed. Like we still got a long way to go. There's a lot of things that we can do better, but that's the fun part. Is like yeah. we know what we have to do better, and all we have to do is actually do it. It's amazing. Like I I I can't believe how 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 much fun I'm having with a business. It definitely helps that our revenue's good. Like we're growing, and we like that's part of the I fun too. It's the scoreboard. I wouldn't be having this much fun if we were doing like ten grand a month. Yeah. Like I'm exactly the scoreboard. Yeah, I say this all the time, and mo mo that's why I love you guys because like no one understands this shit. Yeah, because no people one, are like, oh, okay, sure. When you're like, oh, like uh, beyond a certain point, money itself has diminishing return. Yes. So like, just going from like, if you were to make 500k one month and then 800k the next month, there's nothing like different that you would do on a day to day basis. Exactly. But it's the scoreboard and being like, oh, I fucking did that. Yeah, that's I the mean, fun part. Dude, bitch. I mean, the only thing is gonna allow, like my lifestyle will not change again until I'm until I'm personally netting like 1.5 a month. Yeah, I was right gonna say that's an important a, a month. Yeah. I was gonna so say you, how you, you what else can the, you do with your lifestyle? Yeah, you, bro? You, you said on the last podcast you were spending 40 to 60k a month. What else can you possibly do? How much what are you spending on though? Because like I, I can't even Let me personally see my conceive about personal that. Amex statement. Let's 40 see to my... 60k a month on personal expenses. Yeah, it's not a business expense. So what is well, everything's like? a business expense? You got expense. rent, you have fake Rolexes, <laughs> you have <laughs> You Let's have uh, rented exotics. You have J July 11th to present. So it's August 5th right now. <laughs> Jesus. But like on what? 51. What's that? What's that comprised of? A couple of car payments, a couple of rents, flights, hotels. Flights. Well, I also went to Europe. Okay. Oh, my Facebook ads are still on here. That's weird. Um, STK, 8th Street. Hilton, West Palm, Bay. I see a 2K bill. I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, honestly, like, there's, okay, so one thing that Ben and I talk about is because, okay, so I'll get back to going, back to Tom Cruise. We were on a boat with him and we asked him, we were like, dude, like, at what point do you feel money? Like, at what point does a bill make you go, ooh? And he said, um, at, like, he said, uh, below 150K, it's like inconsequential. I said, like, what if, what if a, ta like, a table at a club you want to go to is, like, 30K? He's like, go right now. Like, literally no problem. 30K. I was like, what? And so, like, my number for that has gotten way higher. So, like, we, me and Ben have become friends with this, like, club promoter in Miami. He's just, like, a funny little side character in our lives because, like, <laughs> he's the most persistent dude ever. We literally never answer this guy, and I feel so bad because he's, like, the nicest guy ever. Yeah. And um, he always texts us. Like, literally, like, three, four times a week. He's like, hey, man, pop out. Like, it's going to be sick. Like, we're going to go to, um, he always wants to go to space. Like you were talking about earlier. It's like, there's no sh way in fuck I'm going to space. Yeah. Like, no shot. No shot. But, like, there was one time, like, we went to Komodo, and Ben bought, like, a a, 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 a bottle or, or two that really, it was, like, 1200 bucks. And then we were going to go to 11, I think. And it was, or no, it was, we were going to go to space with these two girls that we found. And it was like 4K for a table. And like, I was gonna pay for that table. And in my head, we didn't have it going. But in my head, I was like, four, like, it's not, it's nothing, like, that's not that crazy anymore. So, like, now, like, if, if I'm looking at hotel rooms, I just want the suite because I just want it. <laughs> like, the, whatever, like, I'm in a watch group chat where it's like my, my watch guy, like, we'll just post watches all the time. If it's like, if I actually like it and it's under 50K, instant snag. Like, it's just, if I, like, but I don't know. Like, it just doesn't really matter. Like, that's the only thing that's changed. What, what do you think led you to being like that? Like, I've always been impulsive and yeah. irresponsible. So, it's just, <laughs> like, bro, it's even when natural. I was like, even when I have like no money, like, I would always spend myself to zero. Like, that's like not something I'm like super proud of, but like, yeah, that's just like yeah. the way that I. For me personally. What do you feel like your person, your relationship with money, because you don't hold it in a high standard, means mm -hmm. you make more? Sorry, say that again. Like, you don't hold money in a high standard because you're willing to just fucking spend it tomorrow. I mean, yeah, kind of. Like, so, I don't know. I just like... It's like frugality. Ben, ben, yeah. ben said frugality keeps you poor. You think that because you're willing to, like, let go of money and spend it on shit, that means that it comes back to you easier? Uh, that's more of, like, a, a spiritual thing that you kind of have to believe in. I don't know if I fully believe in that. I've probably talked about it. 
But like, no, I I think frugality is the most disgusting shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, it's it's, it's actually it makes me sad. <laughs> like the guy that was like, that, that stitched you. Yeah. Like that makes me sick to my. Well, like, I spent five bucks on coffee a day. He's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's funny to think back to college when like your boys would order a ten dollar Uber. They'd be like, yo, you want a Venmo fee two fifty? Legit. <laughs> yeah. Like I at that point we we're all broke. So you we're understand like, yeah, it though. Yeah. 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 Like it's nothing against them. I mean, I'm not saying it's still. a bad thing. I'm just saying like, the mindset shift. It's where we're at now. It's like, yeah. look at it, Scott. Look at Scott it's, filming shit. It's so weird, like, <laughs> how quick your circumstances can completely change. Yeah, my yeah. biggest thing is, like, not saving for a rainy day, but, like, you talked earlier about wanting to have a family. And mm. I feel like, for me, like, and you're kind of doing this already, but spending money on myself isn't that interesting. Oh, yeah. I, I like, I don't know. Like, what is there to buy? I like watches. That's pretty much the... Tell the us only. what is there to buy. <laughs> yeah. You spend 50 k a month, but tell us what is there to buy. Oh, it's always traveling. Like, it's dinners. It's dinners and, and just bills like that and fucking going to hotels and just like throwing money at people. Like, dude, my setter, Philip, is lives here. Yep. Um, Over and then there. He, was at, he was at the hotel that we were at. Um, and he, it was Ben and him. And they walked upstairs and I told him, I was like, dude, I'll give you a dollar for every sit-up that Ben makes you do. And I'll give you a $100 bonus if you just do whatever the fuck he tells you to do. And so I was doing my thing. I was like, I was doing shoulders and buys. You guys tell? Yeah, look yeah. at this guy. He's fucking yoked. Mm. Poor, poor shirt. Thank Solid. You. I know, right? <laughs> Rips right off my body. And then <laughs> Ben and Ben and Ben and Philip were doing abs over there. And I told him, I was like, dude, dollar per sit up. And then um, at the end, Ben was in a frat. I was not in a frat, so I don't really know this stuff. But Ben's like the warden. We've done this a couple of times. He was late to a call one time, a team call, because he was on an another call and so we hazed the fuck out of him because we were like you want to keep your job yes all right do we do what ben says so ben's the warden and so ben made him hold a plank ben was holding a plank ben's athletic bro ben's strong yeah. ben's a man i love ben ben i love you bro <laughs> we love you too we love you too ben. Yeah, we um, love ben and ben made him hold a plank and then um he made him like not instead of uh like this on the floor it was like hold it like this and still hold the plank with his hands on his face and ben was like think about Think about what you've done. And like he was like, okay, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and Philip was just sitting there. So I ended up I'm paying him 200 bucks just because because he just did what Ben said. And so like shit, shit like that. Like, I don't know. We do fun stuff. Like I Sanjay. buy I buy my okay, so Abby is like she took a chance on me, kind of, because like she had a real job before me. It was like a real job. And then she like came on to she at first worked with my agency for a little bit. She was like an account manager. And then she just started crushing it so hard that I was like, all right, you're now like, high, like you're, I gave her a fat raise. Like I basically doubled her salary. And then um, she, she was like, do you have like a, what do, what do you think of like benefits package? I'm like, benefits? Like, I don't even know the fuck. I don't even know how to do that. Are you talking about like health insurance? I was like, listen, like I'll pay you whatever you want. Health insurance, like if you want that, like you figure it out. But also like, I'll just buy you shit that you want. <laughs> And so, like, yeah, she, thought she was your BB we're, though. We're from, we're from Canada. We get this shit for free. I thought she was yeah, your, legit. No, you guys want to see what free healthcare looks like? Is it is it good or bad? This is a health card. Oh, nice. Yeah. We have a guy in Klein Ascension who's offer. That's not you. Yes, it is. It's me at fifteen. Holy fuck, dude! Yeah, I was fifteen. Let me see it. <laughs> you look like a California surf bro. Yeah, dude. But uh, we have a kid. Oh, in Klein you look like an actual cardinal, like a little bit like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I like the dude. fucking the cardinal hair. We have a kid in client ascension whose entire offer is that he can get like corporations quicker health care because your guy's shit takes like three months. No way. Is That's that cool. not true? He said what, no way about the offer. Like it's cool. Um, wait, th so three months. To, he like, said like really if you want to get like a surgery, you have to wait like three months. I have no idea. I'm like <laughs> I don't know. I've been lucky. Knock on knock on wood. Um, I I've never had to do anything like that. Um. I don't know how the health healthcare system works. I like don't really want to know. I feel like that's sort of like an old person thing to know, where it's like, oh, who, 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 I'm waiting in line today for my healthcare. You're poor. <laughs> if you're waiting in line for healthcare, just go to America. Get it done in the afternoon. I got my hernia taken out four times. I got four hernias. I don't know why. I'm the chillest man on planet. I never stress. I never yell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ooh, ooh. 
<laughs> Dude, the video years. where he's like, I'm a six figure agent show. And he's like, come here. He just chokes him out. <laughs> Rub uh, my hands around your neck. <laughs> Dude, that, ah, that was hilarious. The, the best video of him here is like, I'm a six figure agent. He's business. like, you're going to be sitting there like a stupid motherfucker waiting to die. Boom, boom. I take out all the terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the exact video, but that shit had me rolling. Dude, I, I remember like. We're going to get him on. That's the crazy part. Are you actually? Well, now that he's free. Yeah. I don't think he's coming back to America. He's not allowed to leave Romania. We're going to get him on. Okay. Are you gonna go to Romania? Nah, I'm I'm down. Do you? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's in, it's in the worst. His guy, right? His videographer. That's cool. We'll have Tate on in the next year. I love that. Manifest that shit, bro. We're gonna tell him about you. He's gonna fucking take you out, bro. I press him with some hard questions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What, would you, what would you ask him? No, nah, we're we're not gonna talk about that. I can't give away. Nah, the, he, the secret. he says it now, and then he's yeah. in front of him. He's like, "Oh my god, Andrew. do you remember, do you remember Carson so. Mason? Oh, that little dork, <laughs> <laughs> little peon. I threatened him with his life, and he complied. <laughs> <laughs> Comply or goodbye. <laughs> oh fuck! All right, so give me, give me another one. Give I got a, like a serious question though. It's like, okay, you're a super generous, dude, treating your team extremely well. How do you balance? Or walk the line of not being taken advantage of. Oh, I I just don't give money to anybody else. I've been I've been I mean, dude, like, there's been a couple times. This is gonna I shouldn't even say this because now I'm gonna get fucking a hundred DMs. I'm never doing this again. But like, there was one time someone sent me this sob story about his daughter, and it's a GoFundMe link, and I threw like five hundred bucks down. It was like Damn. for his daughter, like some some was happening, some mm -hmm. some bad was happening, and for some reason it just kind of hit me, and it was like the right night. So I threw 500 bucks down on this GoFundMe. I don't know if it was a scam. I have no idea. And my, con my conscience is clear. But sometimes, like, people ask me for money a lot. Like, in, in the, just in the DM. Strangers. People don't even know. Yeah. Sir, and my leaky gut, please so, like, help. Fo yeah. Follow question. Like, you got anything on you right now? <laughs> like, money? Yeah. I literally have no cash on me. There's no ATMs in fucking Tampa. What is I'll your guys' problem? Watch. Who needs a fucking ATM? <laughs> uh, what do you got? Like, what can I steal from you right now? Just this. Okay, that's fine. And they, these are like 500 bucks. Okay, shit. Yeah, yeah I'll take them. Sure. I just want them for the rest of the episode. Yeah. Bet. Can I like what you said about having a clear conscience. I got stopped the other day. This was like two weeks ago. Somebody got me to donate a couple hundred bucks to like breast cancer research or something. I was like, you look like a cop. Is what you look like. <laughs> remember? Yeah. Yeah. Remember. yeah. yeah. You know, I pulled you over. <laughs> just pull some baddie over. You know, I pulled whip, you over. Whip it out, bro. <laughs> for being too damn sexy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was doing 55 Have you seen, have you seen the, the police cam video where the girl's like, I'll take it all off right now? I'll be like, all right, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Try on the body cam. <laughs> be like, the, the cops are like, we can. I'm like, I'll be like, do it then. It's offer so good, you feel stupid saying no, man. <laughs> Christian looks like almost, like he looks like the average composite of most cops that just got dismissed from their job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Cheers to that, baby. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> clip it. No, no, no. Clip it. Like, make it into a short. <laughs> I'd be the guy that pulls the guy over and be like, you know what? I pulled you over. They'd be like, I was speeding. I'd be like, all right, you're good. You, you admit <laughs> That's why me. you're not a cop. <laughs> yeah. you I have a problem. I'm scared. I'm really scared of authority, dude. If a cop pulls me over, I'm shaking. Legit, yeah. <laughs> Bro, we always talked about this going over the Canadian border. Oh, so nervous. When we so went, we nervous, went to right? For New Year's Eve one time. Oh, yeah. And it was me and my four boys. We're 19. We're like ready to go drink underage in Montreal. It's uh -huh, yeah. And the, the cops or the border patrol's like, why are you guys going to Montreal? We're like, uh, New Year's Eve. And they're like, how many nights? We're like, th three, four, 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 four. We're like, what do you guys do for a living? We're like, uh, what is it? P pizza delivery, college student? <laughs> like, all right, you're good. I'm like, why was I so nervous for that? No, the Canadians are nice, bro. Actually, it's so funny because both times that I've driven over the border, um, I've gone over in my truck. Both times, the, the border guard has been like, "Let me search it." Is this a Hellcat truck? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, brother. The, the first, the first time, the first time it was a guy. He was like, he was like, "Is this your dad's truck?" I'm like, "No, it's mine. I just bought it." He's like, "You bought this at 16?" Like, <laughs> fucking signing clients crossing the border. Yeah, and he was like, "Look at that new sale." He was like, "He's like, this is a nice truck." And then I was like, thanks. And then he forgot to ask me any questions. Just let me go. <laughs> you should have like copymba.com forward slash yes. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was pre copymba. And then the second time I was driving over, that's that's when I was like going to Miami. And he I'm was like, he was like, where are you going? I'm like Miami. He's like, okay. Um, and he's like, he's like, can you pop the hood? I was like, sure. Yeah, whatever you say, officer. I thought he was like, he was like, just search it. So I pop it, and he was like, come over here and lift it up. So I lift up the hood, and he's like. 
So this is one of those, this is one of those Hellcat trucks. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, what does this push? Like 680, 690 horsepower? I'm like, 702. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's like, damn, dude, the cool we'll drive part, safe. The cool part about when I when I was in Montreal, it was like 3 a.m. I'm hammered. If you like admit to a cop in New York that you're hammered, they're just gonna like hit you with their stick or some shit. But in Montreal, they're like, <laughs> I don't think that's true. It was New Year's Eve. They're like, welcome to Canada. They just like gave me a pat on the butt, <laughs> sent me on my way. Yeah, man. To so my, pe- I was going to some pizza shop. They're like, so basically, Christian got mixed up with a Canadian male stripper. That was <laughs> yeah. just as a cop. No, it was like a really attractive female cop too. <laughs> there you go. I was like. Hey, Mrs. Officer. Wee, Mrs. Wee, officer. I dropped out of the force. Office set. <laughs> but that, that's like top top ten song of all time for me. What song? Wow. Mrs. Officer. Lil that's Wayne. A, that's a Carter cl- three. That's a that's clean. Wayne. That's a clean classic. Dude. Top ten song ever. One of mine. That's crazy. dude. Carter three is like maybe my favorite. What's your album top ever. one song? I don't know. That's tough. It's easy to do like top ten, top fifty, top one hundred. Uh, What's your favorite song right now? All right. Favorite song right, right now. now? Do we do the new surprise? Second surprise. Yeah, 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 my favorite song right now it's is the Stick Talk play. original whatever by Cardinal Mason. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! No way! So we Wait, what kind of guitar is this? That's my favorite. Oh, it's, it's Yamaha. Yeah. You want to play a song? Yeah. yeah you got to yeah. do something. That's my favorite song of all time, I just said. <laughs> Whose guitar is it? That's mine. Yeah, tune that shit up. He never plays it, so <laughs> <laughs> you got to fix it a little bit. That man wasn't actually of, planned at all either. <laughs> man of many talents. Yeah, thanks for giving me a perfect segue into that. Yeah. Well, Scott pointed out, he's like, yo, maybe. Favorite song right now? Something Real by Posty. That's just... That's a good song. Boy. Right now. Dude, this, this is a vibe. Turn his mic towards that. Yeah, how do we... You're good. Th- that'd be good. That'd be good. good. You can hear this? Yeah. So what are you doing right now? Just riffing. <laughs> Let the music talk, bro. <laughs> You want me to play? Like, I can play anything. I don't know if you guys know this. Play play uh, some Green Day. No, country music. Country music. Oh, Freebird. Wait. Oh, I got one. But you guys know this one? Yup. Morgan Wallen. I don't really... my money back. You guys gotta sing along. Someone said it drowns a memory. <laughs> oh, but it ain't doing, doing that. that. <laughs> That's another refrain. I've been, I've been sipping, I've been buzzing, shooting doubles like it's nothing wrong and nothing makes you go away. I, I need something you prove. <laughs> something that I'm used to. <laughs> I've been going <laughs> out of two like nothing's gonna cut it, that's a hard truth. I need something you prove. Papa's in the something you prove. Forget the Cold Email Wizard concert. We got the Cardinal Mason. Do you know I coined that? Does everyone know that I coined the Cold Email Wizard concert? Yeah, thing? I remember. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember People that. People started using that. I was I, I was like I was like drunk and I was just like crying laughing to Ben and Sanjay. Thinking about how funny it would be if someone started calling calling the client. I remember the video. You the were like literally concert. crying, laughing in the video. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was like a voice note I put on Twitter. That shit helped ticket sales tremendously. Yeah, people, <laughs> people actually like were saying, actually. Like, hey, got to come to the Coldy Mills. Yeah, we, no. we, were, we probably had sold like I don't know, like 60, 70 tickets, and then like the routes to selling out, which was like one twenty after that, was very quick. <laughs> People on the audio right now are like, what is going on? Like, who is this angel that just stepped into the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is fantastic. What 
else could I play that everyone's gonna know? I'll do one more and then we Stay can go back to the fucking. Can you do that? Oh, I can do that. That's such a. Oh, that's oh. so <laughs> That's so cliche. That's so cliche though. Like, give me. Uh, you went to Post Malone concert last Whiskey, bro. There's some. That's like a John Mayer one. What else could I do? Do you guys know John Mayer? Yeah. Body is a Wonderland. Yeah. Damn. That's like also cliche. I know every John Mayer song. I never like this apple much. Just make your own song, bro. Huh? <laughs> I can't remember how I felt my way before she moved. I pick up the guitar, man. <laughs> I was gonna say Christian's over there melting in the seat. He's <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> We proved the point, man. This guy's fucking nice on the guitar. <laughs> and as a, it's, it's so it's that chord. Just imagine that I can't play both. How far into the podcast are we? Damn. I'm just gonna skip. I'm just gonna skip to an hour to put myself to sleep every night. <laughs> okay. That's you ever play the guitar <laughs> for girls? I haven't in a while. What a rookie! Bro. I haven't in a while. I, the last one I did was like my last like serious thing. He's gonna need. The I only play it if it's like someone's like serious. Oh, so it's like a qualifier. Yeah, yeah. Let's. I uh, get, I gotta be serious about you. Damn. I'm Thank gonna get I'm gonna get hit for this some, fun as fuck. fuck. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> actually insane. Let me see it. Wait, 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 hold up. Put it over Christian's head, like fucking like in the Looney Tunes. No, just... no, no. <laughs> it's a nice guitar. Oh, like just smash it? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, that's what we're going for. Back. Mickey, can you grab this real quick? Oh, yeah. Mickey used to thanks, brother. You just oh, missed like I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some hate from the uh Morgan Wallen I stands because really I, I thought uh you proof was whiskey glasses for a quick second. Oh yeah. All right, uh, business. <clears throat> What's your customer acquisition cost? <laughs> What's your con- What's I mean, your CAC, bro? We get we get Webby leads for like three bucks. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking on dope. Facebook. It's pretty based. Yeah, Webby leads on TikTok for like a dollar. What's your TikTok split testing strategy, bro? We run the same <laughs> so, three ads for like fucking six yo, months. Yo, how was mushrooms? <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I was just pulling up your old tweets, and you said I'm about to do mushrooms, 2020. Damn, are you for real? Yeah. 2020. You know the crazy part? I went to like look up your old tweets and I typed in 2019 as a start date and you didn't have a Twitter until 2020. I started April 2020. I did have a Twitter. That's absurd, I, had, I, had, bro. I had another Twitter that's now locked so no one can see it, but I was actually funny as shit on Twitter. I wanted to have an audience for a long time. And so when I, when I finally got one, like I'm very happy now that I, that I have people that give a shit about what I say. It's kind of cool. We do research here, bro. Damn. So what was my the- research didn't get past like right when I clicked on your profile <laughs> and I clicked onto the header. And it was, I don't think you understand how good Mason is at copywriting. Who said that? Something to that effect. That's Ben. Ben Bader said that. That was Ben. Okay, okay. But, like, when did you realize, like, you were that guy when it came to copywriting? Like, how long did it take you to get to that level of confidence with that skill? It took me a while. I think, like, when I felt like I was really good, I was probably about a year in when I felt like I could kind of do anything. Like, for a while, like, you're going to feel, like, a little bit, I mean... What about you? Because you're you're a copywriter. I feel like, like I'm a very different breed than you. You yeah, you're B two B. I do like very uh, logical. You do very emotional. Yeah, I mean, well, I kind of like I didn't really get a chance to like flex the muscle too much because I was doing ecom, mm. and like I can write an ecom email in like legit ninety seconds. But because like, you you yours is yours is more like you test a lot, so it's like one script that you run forever and you test it a but lot. But the things that you write are very outside the box. Like, how do you write that in ninety seconds? So like, this is gonna hit. So an e-commerce, uh, e-commerce email, and I only know this because I, I worked at Structured with Chase and Nick, Chase Diamond, and so like I had to write legit like 20 emails a day. 
and I had to figure out it's fucking so it's it's subject line preview text header subheader call to action subheader body call to action and you just it's it's we talked about this last time where it's like mad libs you just yeah. fill in the fucking blanks where it's like the subject line is like basically just something catchy that you think of I would literally have like notes on my phone of like just all the f funny shit that I would think of where I, and I'd think about like brands I could use it with because I was on like probably 10 brands at the agency and um and so I'd be like oh that's a funny thing I can give that to disco or I can give that to balls or I can give that to a system and so I would just like that would be one of my lines and the preview text is sort of like just hypes up the subject line and the header is like literally just like what the email's about subheader is a one-liner where it's like what can you say to support the idea so like let's say it's like memorial day right so like subject line 30 percent off for memorial day preview text get in for da -da -da -da. header 30 30 percent off just for you subheader you know um whatever memorial day means to the brand call to action and then subheader is like here's what other people are saying body reviews Call to action is just a call to action. So it's like super fucking easy. It's like barely copy. Ecom is like really fucking easy. Yep. It, I, I actually started to get good when I started to do more like personal brand stuff. When I was like writing for like real offers and like my, my words actually mattered. Because like before, <laughs> like when you're doing ecom, it's like it's all design. As long as the email yeah. goes out, you're going to make money. It doesn't matter what the fuck you say. Like that's why e-commerce email is such an easy thing to do because it's like all it is is like someone to just sit there and send emails. It doesn't matter what you say. That's why like I have a lot of respect for, you guys know Zarok. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mail or profit. Yep. He actually does it right because he actually can get like legitimate results with emails because like the stuff he says in the emails actually matters. Yeah. Like people are actually reading it and it's like more direct response. But like the old strategy is literally just fill all the holes. So it's not about like what the emails actually say. It's just like what part of the customer journey do you put emails in? What What, what was the original question? <laughs> I think you guys were talking about the difference in your oh yeah, yeah, yeah emotional versus logical stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the, uh, the original like the, question was the original like original question long? was like when did you feel like you were that guy when it came to copyright? It was about a year in. I I remember like I remember I started to get a bit of an ego where it's just I was getting so much inbound people just wanted to work with me where I was like I just felt like I could kind of charge whatever I wanted and like I was kind of just doing whatever I wanted and I was like it was the first time where people were listening to me instead of the other way around. Like your first client. They're like, we need you to do this. Do it. And I'm like, okay. It's like a job, yeah. right? But it's like a year in, you have a client, and they're like, hey, man, I really need these kinds of emails. And it's like, are you sure you want You're that? You're like, no, you don't. You need this. Yeah. It's like, I, I would recommend this. And they're like, well, why? What? It's like, because this worked for this name drop that you know kind of thing. And then they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. How'd you come up with the disco email? Which one? The American Psycho. Oh, because uh, um, Bronze. You guys remember Bronze from Twitter? Yeah, mm. Bron. Uh, no. Is I'm he not around, around anymore? No, I'm he's not banned. as plugged in the Twitter. He's to be banned. With you. Yeah, you're not really on Twitter. No. Um, I, no. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah. American Psycho was becoming like a trend on Twitter, and I think I just watched the movie, and I was like, "It'd be funny if we just sort of like did like an American Psycho kind of spin on." It's like it's man, it's male skincare, and um, yeah, I just kind of spun it up. It went out, and everyone loved it. Like. My metric for, like, when I was doing e-com email, like, my metric for, like, a good email was not, like, how many how much sales. Like, what's the number? Like, what's the revenue? Didn't really matter. It was more like, what does their inbox say? Like, because, like, I would ask one of the girls on the team, the disco team, I'd be like, yo, what's, what's, the, what's the inbox looking like? And she was like, oh, my God, everyone loves this one. This is hilarious. Like, you killed it. And so, like, that With, was, like, their responses to it? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah. So that was, People that was, like, respond to e-com emails? Yeah. Bro, people respond to you. Like, dude, if you say, if you tell people to respond, they will. Yeah. It's actually a good thing to do. I don't know if you guys do that. You yeah. guys start doing that for list yeah. kit. I have like an email list. Yeah, we do. I'm like, like just drop tiny. a reply with feature requests or questions or just to say what's up. When I started my email <laughs> list, I knew that responses like boost the deliverability. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, reply to this email and I'll send you a swipe file. It's like, yeah, it's responses. like the original auto DM. Too. It's a psychology, yeah. dude. I said like not to get nerdy, but the loom video strategy with cold email. If you just send a video up front, it will get open far less than if you ask people if they want to see a video. Mm -hmm. Because then you get the intent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. get yeah. Buy in. So, for real. What are the, all right, pop quiz. What are the three things you need to be a copywriter? Is this stuff that I've said? Yep. Empathy's on there? Nope. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Empathy is nope. not on there? Eh, in a way. When did I tweet this? Because I need to know what headspace I was in. 2020. <laughs> three years ago let's see if that dude is absolutely let's, pressing him let's right see now. if the I'm Sauvignon the Blanc the really, the really the deteriorated really, the memory dude, the crazy part is like it applies so much today but when you said it you definitely had no clue what it would evolve to this <laughs> alright bro how do you fill a cup of Froyo what you pull the lever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a dumb fucking question <laughs> Well, he's asking questions from three years ago. I'm asking questions. From you three rotate years the ago. cup around when you pull it out, <laughs> and then you have room for the toppings. 
Dude, it's really crazy because you said things you need to become a copywriter, which is exactly what you do on TikTok. A personality, uh-huh. the ability to talk to people and relate it to them, uh-huh. and a pair of balls. Is that what I said? Yep. Let me see the tweet. Things you don't need to be a copywriter. English degree, perfect writing skills. Things. It's got no engagement. Got one bookmark. I don't think that was... There, it doesn't show engagement on there. Things you do need to be a copywriter. A personality, the ability to talk to people. And that's like balls. the exact thing that you've done to go viral on TikTok. And you said it oh. three years ago, and you had no clue that that would wow. be your, your TikTok oh. formula. Wow, dude. What a banger. Man, I was tweeting fire back then. No one understood me. That was back when I had zero followers. I want to see if you actually had engagement on this. Dude, I, I feel like I followed you pretty long ago. I'd have to check on that, but it's, it's been at least two years. I mean, we, well, it was when we met but in I Miami. Met you. I, no, yeah, beforehand, I, met you I, was, I was following you, though. I still knew you as, like, Cardinal Mason. That's so wild that people started calling me that. I didn't realize that <laughs> I was, like, known as Cardinal Mason until, like, until Miami, when I went yeah. down there, like that time was then it was like, oh, you Cardinal, like a Mason. Cardinal Mason is like Twitter, but like I, I didn't. But realize that's all. It was I mean, like how else are we supposed to know you? I mean, I don't know, but like I, because like I just thought of it as <laughs> yeah. Like, you literally had no likes on this. I'll like yeah, it. Yeah, legit zero likes. I'll like it. I'll retweet it. Thanks, man. Yeah, hey, yeah. It'll get some engagement. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna retweet it too. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, it's like overtime, Megan. You know, overtime, Megan. God. Yeah. Poor wait, girl. Wait, wait, Poor wait. girl dude. <laughs> wait, it's like wait, the wait, name wait. of the company and your first name. Poor right? girl. I was Cardinal Cardinal Copy, and my name was Mason. I was but gonna I say she just recently blew up. You kind of did her dirty. Very there. different reasons. Why? You didn't know what happened to her? <laughs> of course. That's fucked up. Of course dude. I know what happened. That's fucked up, dude. I love overtime, Megan. Yeah. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. Uh... <laughs> Listen, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your tapes. I know what you can do. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> That's illegal, bro. <laughs> Is it? Wait, what? I, I think you didn't so. know that. What's illegal? All of her like Snapchat archive, like all of her nudes leaked. I knew that, but what's illegal about it? I think I like That's uh, what uh, he's saying. viewing That's illegal st- like stuff that wasn't released without people's permission is illegal. Friend showed me. Okay, yeah, he's illegal. <laughs> Fucking yeah, Ben. Show me. Someone ben. on the sh- <laughs> some random on the streets like, yo, you see this? God right. damn it, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back like, on track. What are we talking about? We got 25 Back on left. track. We were never on track, uh, bro. <laughs> this is the most unhinged episode we've ever look done. This. Look at me, cradling a Bible, and you guys are talking about overtime, Meg. Yeah. <laughs> you brought it up. Over. You brought it up. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> You're not talking about overtime, Megan. <laughs> You're probably poor. <laughs> Mickey, how old are you? 19. You're 19. What's your net worth? <laughs> No, it's not. Why are you lying to the top G? <laughs> I know you're not worth four, four pounds, four euros. Couldn't go to Cannes Film Festival and come back with a positive net worth. <laughs> Cannes Film Festival. Right, sorry. Sorry. Oh, man. All right. yeah, <laughs> the kiss, the kiss. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. For real. We're going to get like What size are your feet? Comments. What? What size are your feet? Those 11. are fire, by the way. Ten and a half. It's ten so and a half? I think these are the ten. You want to swap? No. <laughs> those these. are fire. No, I need these. Dude, I'm short. I need the little. little these boosters. have some lifts in them. Little high heel. Yeah. You're um, a short king, though. Like I am. You're somebody who's I am. Is short. short but I used to, actually, asshole? no, no. Actually, huh? this you're is perfect. Short. I would love you to call him with. short. Oh, We're all he, short except he for you. He is short. He, you're, you're not, not short. short. You call him short. That's mean. I don't know, dude. Legit. That, let's talk about this. That's mean. Let's actually talk about this. That's a statement of fact, bro. He's doing well in like every measurable part of life. That doesn't mean you call it out, huh? It doesn't mean you call it out. What do you no, mean? this is good. This up. is good. Let's talk about this. <laughs> so I actually used to be like super insecure about my height. Okay. Because I when I was in high school, I've ne- first of all, I've never actually dated, like actually had a long-ish term thing with a girl who was like shorter than me. Like my last girl from earlier this year was like this much taller than me. Okay. You're like no um, heels, please. No the heels. last the last two or three girls were like always a little bit taller than me. And then when I was in high school, I dated this girl who was like five nine or five ten. She was like a lot taller than me. Yeah. She was like yeah, so yeah, she was like 5'10 ginger chick. You climbed that tree? Tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the then ginger, um, top and of the dude, morning. The to whole you. time I thought I was gonna keep growing, which is why I was like, ooh, like I just felt like fuck me keep growing. Once I realized I was gonna not grow anymore, I was like, eh, guess this is it. And honestly, like, dude, like I think I wouldn't even want to change anything. Like, I think I can't remember. I don't regret a single thing. There is not a single thing I would want to change about my life because I'm just so happy with where I'm at right now. I wouldn't want to change. A single thing. I know that if I was like an inch taller, my personality would probably change. I would say, want that, say that you weren't successful. Would you want to change a thing? But yeah, I would, but I would. 
But you, like you'd, you'd want, want to change, change the fact that he wasn't fucking successful. No, I'm yeah. saying you're you're saying you wouldn't change the thing now because of how your life trajectory has gone. Exactly. If you didn't go down this trajectory, would you be will, like, I need to no, change. No, I would I would want to change it. Like I would I would be motivated to change it. But I wouldn't think about like I regret where I'm at. I would just moti- I would just be I'd just change it. I think that's the right way to go. And you can't about regret it. how tall you were born to be. No, I'm saying he yeah. says he doesn't regret a thing because he's really successful. Also, oh, you can take solace in the fact that there's just plenty of fucking six one, six two, six eight, six ten guys who wish they were you. Yeah. So yeah. Like, like and like, dude, like honestly, <laughs> the best, I, I the best I compliment I ever again. got, the best compliment I ever got, um, was from a girl, and she's she was like legit, like it, she was like, I know I'm like a little bit taller than you, but you feel like six inches taller than me. Like I know you're not, but like <laughs> hey, yo. when I talk to you, like you feel like you're like six inches taller. Six one on the money. You say nine, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, like four okay. minutes. I mean, it was basically just her saying that like I'm larger than life. <laughs> yeah. This, we. You want to do lightning round? Stand I mean, on my the, money head, the, but yeah, oh man. What's the well, proper way? Like, question. what's the proper way to end this you specific? Know, we, we gotta do. We gotta do lightning round. All right, uh, lightning. Let's, let's actually do lightning. We're in Tampa, so if you had to spend 100k in a day, what would you buy? Um, I would buy an ice blue day date. <laughs> there you go. Platinum, day, platinum day date, easy. He's good at this. He right away. Not even a hezzy. Yeah. No hezzy. You just put you just put I it feel up. like we have to re ask the question because the answer yeah. was it just made me feel so good. It felt great. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna say it now. He's not gonna say Kinda it. Kinda have to. As if if you could have dinner with any three people, who would it be and why? <laughs> no, say give it give it to him straight. Give it to him straight. Okay. Give him straight. <laughs> if you could have dinner. Take, take the helmet off and ask the <laughs> fucking question. <laughs> All right. If you could have dinner with any three people, who would it be and why? You guys and Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Get a zoom in. Get a zoom in. Get this fucking cop out of the podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. Yeah. You're the one I actually want to go to dinner with. I'm going to get a one on one with you. That's why. I'll go, to, I'll go to a dinner with these three. Yeah, you're and dessert, then, and then baby. You and I, You'll you have to I. rip these off my dead fucking body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question of the podcast. Yeah. If you could leave the people watching, all There's 137 viewers <laughs> who are still watching and made it to this point, what would that message be to them? I would say you're watching the beginning of a, of a, a podcast trajectory that you don't, I don't think people understand what this is. I don't think, because like, you guys have been doing this for what, a year? Not even, yeah. Six months. Six, six months? Six months, yeah. I think that you guys are, you guys are actually, one of the things I admire most about you is that you guys are kind of like business robots. Right, where it's like you don't really take emotionality into account. You kind of just do what needs to be done and you're wicked consistent and you're all wicked smart and you're just tough mentally and all everything you're else. From right? I know that you guys are gonna do this as you know, as long as you guys are breathing and as long as it's you know doing, you know, benefiting you in some way, you're gonna keep it up. And I just know that because of that, your audience is gonna grow. I'm happy to be on episode, you know, probably under 50, right? Yeah, we're like 30-something. 30-something? 31, 32. Because you guys are going to be up to episode 500 one day, and there's going to be, you know, 200,000 people watching. It's going to be cool to know that I was on there, and happy to know you guys. No, we'll have you on for a couple episodes. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. My guy. That was fun. Thanks for watching. Tune in to at Cardinal Mason on Twitter or TikTok, at Cardinal Mace on Instagram. And plug plug YouTube too, because we're we're launching. Oh yeah, YouTube Cardinal too. Mason on YouTube. That should be launching literally any hour now. So uh, it'll be out by the time this is out. Presley, get the fuck to work. He's probably bro. doing it right now. What am I paying you for? <laughs> Cut. I thought you worked for me. Cool. <laughs> work.